Hi, welcome to my channel. This is the first video of our new series, which is how to create an Angular REST client application to authenticate and authorize user when we have Spring Boot RESTful server running in background. And to achieve this goal, we are going to learn several concepts of web technology in this series. But we will do it gradually by adding one at a time. So now, what we are going to do in this series, here it is. First, we are going to develop a simple REST server using Spring Boot and we'll do some simple test runs, right? And then we will add Spring Security Dependency in our project, create required entities, and also tables in our database. After that, we will authenticate and authorize user that we have in our database using Spring Security. Then to secure the Dutch transmission, we will add JWT in our project and perhaps some additional encryption method to make it more secure. I will tell you when we reach to this point that why we need this additional encryption. Then finally, we will build an Angular REST client and will create all required forms for user registration and login. I'm going to use Postgre SQL version 13 for this whole series. And for development, I will use Visual Studio Code and Postman as a REST client until we build our own in Angular. Now come to prerequisite. First, you should have basic knowledge of REST technology. I'm not talking about implementation here, but the theoretical knowledge of basic REST architecture. Second, we are going to use concepts of object-oriented programming. So having fair knowledge of object-oriented programming will help you to understand and implement the concepts of this series. I may explain these concepts, but it will increase the length of the video and this is not the goal of this series, right? It would be better if you are already familiar with Spring Boot and usage of annotations. Basic knowledge of JPA is really helpful. If you don't have and want to learn, watch my series on JPA, link is top right corner of the screen. And last, familiar with TypeScript or JavaScript object-oriented programming. It will be helpful to understand the concepts when we build Angular client. Now, before moving further, I want to tell you guys that the style of coding that you see in my videos is absolutely not how programmers do in real projects. I keep it simple so that it can be easily understood. In real projects, our approach is more modular and usually we build libraries for repetitive tasks. In this series, I will try my best to show some of these approaches without compromising the simplicity. So let's get started. To create a new project in Visual Studio Code, you need to press this shortcut command, Control plus Shift plus P, type Spring in it, and select this option, create a Maven project and press enter. Now here we need to specify the version of Spring Boot. I'm going to select the latest stable version, which is 2.5.5. The language is Java, of course. Let's specify the group ID and press enter. Artifact ID is, let's say, Spring Security. And the packaging type is var. The version of Java that we are going to use in this series is Java version 8. Now we need to choose some dependencies for our project. And for now, I'm going to choose only one, which is Spring Web. Press enter and enter again. I'm going to generate my project inside my app drive. Click on generate, click on open, and our project has been generated. Now close this window and let's quickly create our first controller class with an endpoint to test this application. I'm going to create a folder, controllers, and inside this folder, I'm going to create a file, home controller.java, right? Annotate this class with address controller. This annotation rest controller is basically consists of two annotations. One is controller and the other one is response body. Okay. Now the another annotation that we need to use here is at request mapping. And inside this double quotes, we need to provide the HTTP request URI to this particular controller. So let's say from the context. Now let's define our first endpoint get mapping and here we need to give the HTTP path to this particular method so let's say home and let's say home 
and we are simply going to return a string from here not going to accept any parameter and we are going to return let's say home okay now run this application localhost 8080 slash home right so our test run is successful and by default spring boot uses this port 8080 for our application but if you want to change this port you can simply go to your code and here inside this resources folder open this file application.properties and set a property server.port okay now here you can specify whatever port you want to use so let's say i want to use 8989 save this and run it again press enter of course not accessible if we type 8989 then it is working right now let's move to the next section which is adding spring security in our project close this terminal press ctrl plus shift plus p again type spring in it select this option add starters and press enter type spring security press enter and enter again spring boot starter security dependency has been added in our project the moment we add spring boot starter security in our project spring boot downloads all jars that we require in order to implement user authentication and authorization mechanism now save this file run this application and let's hit this endpoint once again and let's see what happens localhost 8989 slash home see now spring is showing a user login form and in order to access any endpoint of our application we need to provide a valid username and password by default spring security comes with a default authentication mechanism which get configured and become active automatically when we add this dependency in our project auto configuration is one of the main aspects of spring boot it reduces the time that we require to add jars and configure in order to use them and since this is a default authentication mechanism it also comes with a default user which is user and you can find the password for this user in the console itself here it is Spring Boot generates a new password every time you run the application. So copy this, paste it here, click sign in, and now we are allowed to access this endpoint. So this is the default authentication mechanism of Spring Security. But of course, we are not going to use this default behavior because our goal is to authenticate users that we have in our database table. And for that, we need to disable and override the default security configuration. Let's see how we can do that. Close this terminal. Let's first disable the default security configuration. And by disabling, I mean to disable the default form based login authentication mechanism and replace it with other way of authentication. So for that, go to spring security application.java, annotate this class with enable web security, extends web security configurer adapter now let's override a method which is configure which has this http security object as a parameter press enter now we can use this http object to override the default security configuration so let's first disable that form based login mechanism http dot authorize request dot any request dot authenticate it okay now save this and run this application again and now if you try to access this endpoint we get this error 403 forbidden because we just detached the default form based login from the class path so now spring boot is expecting from us to specify our own rule so let's see how we can do that go back to vs code kill the terminal and here after authenticated say dot and 
and dot http basic okay so now we have just disabled that form based login and enabled the http basic authentication mechanism let's run this application again close this window open a new private window localhost 8989 home default user is user and the password is here copy this paste it here and now we are able to access our endpoint but this time by using http basic authentication mechanism so now we have seen how we can change the authentication methods by just adding few code in our configuration file but we are still using that only default inbuilt user which is not enough we want to add more users in our project and for that spring security provides two approaches that we can use first in memory authentication where we define all users with their password and roles in the code itself using and overriding the configuration of authentication builder class which is automatically initialized by spring boot and available to use in the application context second approach is database authentication where we have user credentials stored in our database table so let's see both of these approaches one by one starting with in memory authentication to add users in our application using in memory authentication we need to override the configure function which accepts authentication manager builder class object in parameter right press enter now using the object of authentication manager builder we can actually define user base that we want to attach with our spring security mechanism so let's say auth dot in memory authentication dot with user now here we need to provide the username so let's say user one dot password and inside this double quote we need to provide the password so let's say user one but by default spring security expects password to be encrypted and if it does not find any password encoder being in the application context it will simply throw an exception so in order to force spring security to use plain password we just need to prefix this password with loop inside the curly braces now spring security will not look for any password encoder then let's define the role for this user role is let's say user save this and now run the application close this window open a new private window let's say localhost 8989 home user 1 and user 1 see now spring security is using users that we have defined using in memory authentication now let's add one more user here dot and dot with user username is let's say admin1 dot password again inside the curly braces loop admin1 dot roles let's say admin okay now save this save the terminal run the application again localhost 8989 home admin1 admin1 sign in right so by this way using in memory authentication we can add as many as users we want to add right now let's see how we can use password encoder to use encrypted passwords so as i said by default spring security expects a password encoder in the application context and if it is not there it will simply throw an exception so let's see an example let's remove this save this file and run this application again okay press enter user one and user one sign in nothing happens go back to vs code and see the console here you can see that there is no password encoder mapped for the id now okay so spring security is expecting some sort of password encoder to be there 
in order to use the encrypted password. So let's define our own password encoder. Tell the terminal, let's register bean at bean password encoder. We are going to use decrypt password encoder and simply going to return new decrypt password encoder. Okay, save this. Now, every time user provides user, it is going to be encrypted using this password encoder. But in order to make a match, we also need to encrypt this password using the same password encoder. So let's create an object of vehicle password encoder. Encoder equal to new decrypt password encoder. And using this object of encoder, we can actually encode this password encoder.encode user1 and encoder.encode admin okay save this and run this application again press enter user1 user1 okay now we are using encrypted passwords now in next section let's see how we can specify rules over endpoints so that only users with specific role can access it. Go back to VS Code, close this terminal, and let's make this home endpoint to be accessible to everyone. That means a requester need not to provide any username or password in order to access this home endpoint. So let's do that. Go back to Spring Security Application Java file, and after this authorized request, press Enter. And here say dot ant matches and inside this parenthesis we need to provide the HTTP request path to our endpoint which is home then permit all and that's it save this and run the application close this window open a new one localhost 8989 home and this endpoint is now accessible and we do not need to provide any username and password. Now let's create an endpoint specifically for users with role admin. Go back to VS Code, kill the terminal, go to homecontroller.java, copy this method, paste it here. Let's say value admin, and this is admin home. We are simply going to return a string from here. Let's say welcome admin save this now let's define a rule in our spring security application java so that only users with role admin can access this endpoint copy this paste it here and replace this home with admin dot has role admin okay now save this run the application Now let's try to access this admin endpoint. Okay, and let's try to access this with user one first. Sign in. Okay, we are not allowed. Admin. Now this time using admin one, admin one, sign in, and we are able to access it. So this is how we can define role specific access to particular endpoint. And using this method, we can also create endpoints for user with role user. And you can also have as many role as you want in your application. You can do a lot of things with this URL using Spring Security Configuration. And that we will see in the whole series with the progress. Okay. But for now, this is the end of in-memory authentication mechanism. And next, we will see how we can authenticate users that we have in our database. This video will get really long if we add that too in this video. So I'm going to split this video in two. And in next part of this video, we will see the use of database authentication mechanism. So please check the part two of this video in the playlist. And if you landed on this video directly from the search, the link to that video is now here at the right top corner of this video. So thanks for watching and see you there.